Page two, Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. Four four time signatures, so there's four counts in a measure and a quarter note gets a count. We have one sharp in the key signature, so either we are in G major, or I think right now, since are you doing minors yet, I can't remember. I guess we're just gonna stick with G major. Just pretend we're in G major. If you're doing the scales, you need to be doing the G major scale. I have a video on it, you do it one octave up and down. Just do the scale. It will help you in playing the pieces. It, it really will, this, knowing the scales well. Let's take this one hand at a time, make sure we've got the rhythms and fingerings down. The right hand, you're starting out on one here. It says above it, one on, and then there's a line. They want you to know the, what is the name of the note. What is the name of that note? Well, it's a B, I just told you, I'm sorry. So we're in this position, sort of. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and that's tied. And then for the next D that you do play, it's second finger. Again, it's a repeated note. That is the same note played more than once. Repeated note. Huh? We take advantage of repeated notes if we need to change hand positions, and that's what we're doing. We're going from here to here. We just changed hand positions. And that's all this is for. Measure five. Remember the notes at the beginning of the lines in the little squares are measure numbers. So measure five. One, two. One, two, three. And then you cross over. They want third finger. I don't care. You can use two if you want. The problem is on measure eight, you need third finger on the B. So if you use third finger, you're there. If you use two to cross over, during the rest, you got to come down. And that's okay too. You can do either one. Going on, one, two, one, two, three, four, one. You get the idea. I don't know that I really need to play this for you. You can do it yourself, I hope. Let's go over to measure 15. How's the half notes? You're here, and then reach up here, two. And the measure 17. One, now thumb. Again, we're, it's repeated notes. We're going to change hand positions. One, two, three. Two, and you're back to what you were doing before. Last line, measure 30, or 31 actually, where the right hand plays, you're here. One, two, three, four. And that's tied. Oh, one, two, three, four. And that's tied. One, two. And then for the last note, that B, you know that's a B, right? You can use second finger or thumb or whichever. I don't care what finger you use, just use a finger. So, left hand, well, you have a G and a B. D to start, so we're here. One, two, three. So we're not using the middle note. Actually, the B is in the upper staff. That's doing it. Two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three, four, one, two, rest, red. And then we have a four chord. That's a C and an E here. And then a one chord. Measure nines, five, seven chord, we're just not using the C. We don't have to use them all. Three, four, and then measure 11, you just come down. Here, for you. And then for measure 13, you come back up. You have a rest, you can do it. And measure 17, you have a two beat rest to get down here, way down here. It's like you were at the beginning, but now you're an octave lower. Last line, measure 30. You're up here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. That's tied. You hold it down for six counts. And then a two beat rest. And then a here. And just lift up and move here at the end. You just lift up and move. To your, that's all. No, no quick jerky motions or nothing. You just lift up and move. It's fine. You're cutting this note a little bit short. So you got time to get down here. Because that note needs to be on the beat. Yeah. Put the hands together. Here, you're playing different notes and different fingers and everything in the hands. Good luck with that. One, two. This all goes together. Crossover. Rest. Rest. You put the hands together.
to go through it very carefully and put the hands together and then go back through the hard parts, probably the whole thing, and work them out and get rid of the hesitation so it's a steady beat. You can go slow, it's up to you, but a steady beat all the way through. Then we can think about the articulation. That's the phrasing. I follow the words for the phrasing. I don't like Faber's phrasing at all. So here is lift up. Of course, if you have a rest, you have to lift up. So put in the phrase and just lift up a little bit, okay? I tend to play the melody fairly quickly when I'm looking for the phrases because I can hear the musical sentences more clearly if I go a little faster. And that's why I do that. You don't have to do that. You can do it any way you want, but just... Uh, I like to hear the phrasing in my head and that's how I do it. Then the dynamics. Well, they apply to the melody, wherever it is. At the beginning, MP, mezzo, piano is sort of soft. Whatever you think sort of soft is, it's not soft, it's just sort of soft. The left hand is very soft. See, this is very soft. The major seven, you come down. Now, back up to moderately soft. It applies to the melody. Like on measure 14, this is melody. So it's loud, soft right there. And that note on measure 16, that note, that's not melody. That's soft. And now 17, that's it's melody. Because you started measure 17 moderately loud. Did I mention that? I, you're, you're sort of loud there and you're going up to loud. And you're loud here from measure, what, 20 or 19 on? Then come down. I measure 23, come down. Moderately loud. And then go back up to loud. Moderately loud, a little louder, loud. There. And the left hand's soft. Measure 30, it's uh, come down moderately loud. That's, that's, that's moderately loud. And this last bit is soft. And the last measure I recommend is very soft if you can, both hands. Both, on those last two measures, it's both hands. There's no melody here. It's all just a chord. So both hands are the same. I don't know how much you're struggling and playing one hand louder than the other, but you need to be able to do it, so I'm asking you to keep trying. It will come if you just keep trying. It will come. may not come in this piece or the next, but it will come eventually, and you can always come back and play these pieces again later when you've developed that control. Yeah. Speed, it's in the middle. It's not fast or slow find recordings of this. This is one of the pieces when I put this on YouTube, I get a copyright strike because it's copyrighted music. But that's okay. I'm getting used to copyright strikes. Then they've added pedal. Oh goody. There are some places it would be nice to have pedal, but if you're using pedal, you want to understand why you're using it. Because if you don't understand why you're using it, don't use it. Don't just automatically pedal everything, hoping for the best. These books tend to keep the pedaling simple, and that's okay, except you get used to hearing the junk because it's simple. I don't want you to get used to hearing the junk. I want you to be very critical on what you're listening to. So I complicate the pedaling just a little bit. Oh, it's the way I am. At the beginning, we're pedaling here mainly because of the repeated notes. I want to connect them here. I want to connect them. And that's one of the reasons we use pedal is to connect repeated notes sometimes. We don't always connect them, but if you want to connect them, this is how you do it. So I'm going to push the notes down first and then the pedal. I'm going to lift it up after I play the quarter notes in the second measure. I'm going to connect it. But I don't want to smear it. 
and then measure five. I'm going to put it down. I'm going to go ahead and pe pedal these. I want, I want the overtones. I want to connect it. I don't like this. Or this. I don't want to smear that. So I'm going to change it. Well, on measure five, I can lift, I just lift up on, on the fourth beat. You don't really need to uh, pedal measure six. We're fine there. On measure nine, we can pedal that to connect it. But lift up on the on the quarter rest. I want to hear a quarter rest. Then pedal and lift up. You don't need to pedal these, you'll smear it. If I pedal it like they're showing, starting in measure nine, this is what it sounds like. I think that's terrible. I really do. So again, on measure nine, I can pedal that, but I want to lift up for all the quarter rests. And I'm not pedaling these quarter notes. On measure 13, I'm not pedaling it. But on measure 14, I'd like to connect the quarter notes here. I have to pedal those. So starting at measure 13, I don't pedal. But then pedal. But then don't pedal measure 15. I don't need the pedal for that. Then at measure 17, it's like in the beginning. I pedal to connect the repeated notes. Measure 21, you don't need to pedal this. You can pedal the first two beats of measure 21 if you want to connect it, same in measure 5. But don't pedal the other stuff. And again, on measure 25, I'm pedaling this like I did it before. I'll connect the repeated notes, lift up for the qu quarter rest, I want to hear silence, and I don't pedal the quarter notes. two measures you can pedal those. We want the overtones here. And that's my impression of the pedal. You experiment and see what you like and don't like. I just think their pedaling is mushy as well. The Fermat at the end, you should hold it out as long as it feels right, and then go on or quit. If you're, uh, with a uh, metronome, I would double the value and hold it for eight counts instead of four so I can stay with the metronome is all. And that's how I'll do it in the play with me too. In fact, let's play this together slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. Not going to do any dynamics, we're not performing it, just notes and rhythms. And I'm going to pedal it as I suggested, or at least I'm going to try to. So I'll give us four counts, let's play it together slowly. You should be playing the same notes I'm playing at the same time I'm playing them. One, two, ready, go. One, two. One, two. Two, 
one. a duet for this at the bottom of page two. I'd like to sort of play that and you play what you just played but a little faster. And I need to play steady quarter notes so we can stay together because I can't hear you. I can't follow you. So I'm going to improvise and change this duet a little bit to play quarter notes on something. So I'll give us four counts and let's try it together slowly. I'll make sure you can play this without any hesitations or this won't work. Now to make this work also I need you to go up an octave on the keyboard because the duet part is using some of these notes. So just pretend middle C goes up to this middle C on the keyboard and instead of here you're going to be up here. Play it all up here. One, two, ready, go. One, two, ready, go. 